Hello, and welcome to PlanetSide 2. In the last few videos we covered basic territory mechanics, which will hopefully mean you'll always be able to find a fun fight to go to and know what to do to successfully attack or defend that territory. But what can you as an individual do to help? This is where understanding class basics comes into play. In this video, we're going to cover the default loadouts and what you can do with them right out of the box. But before I talk about each class individually, I'm first going to say that as a new player, you should absolutely try all the classes, because it might turn out that something you thought you wouldn't like is actually your favourite thing to play. Going down the list, let's first look at the Infiltrator. The first loadout, called Long Range Sniper, is exactly that. It's armed with a sniper rifle that is great at engaging at long ranges, a standard sidearm, a recon detection device which allows you to shoot a dart to reveal enemies on the minimap, a predator style cloak that allows you to go invisible for a short duration, a chameleon module which buffs your cloak, a standard frag grenade, and the auxiliary shield which slightly increases your survivability. Here's a quick clip to show you what it looks like in practice. The second loadout, called Spec Ops Hacker, is more for infiltration. You can change to this loadout by pressing this button at the top or by pressing 2 on your keyboard. When you switch to it, you can see that we have a different tool and a different cloak. The new tool is a motion spotter and it also reveals enemies on the minimap, but it works a little differently than the detection device. It lasts longer and it has a larger detection radius. But, you have to place it at your feet, and you can only have one active at a time. The new cloak causes a lot of headaches for new players. You can stay cloaked indefinitely with this cloak, but it does disable your primary weapon. Here's a quick clip of what it looks like in practice. Now you might be asking yourself, that doesn't seem too useful, and you'd be right if it wasn't for the fact that all infiltrators also have the ability to hack enemy terminals and base turrets in the same way as you would overload a generator. And remember, your cloak is predator style. The more you move, the easier you are to see. Next up is the light assault. The first loadout, called Rooftop Skirmisher, comes with a carbine, which is a great all-purpose weapon that is accurate both when aiming and firing from the hip, a standard sidearm, a rocklet rifle that you can use against both ground and air vehicles. It has two fire modes. You can left-click to shoot one rocklet at a time for accuracy, or you can right-click to empty a magazine in a burst. 
jump jets, which allow you to fly when you hold the space bar, an advanced shield capacitor, which increases the recharge speed of your shields, a standard frag grenade, and an auxiliary shield, which synergizes quite nicely with the advanced shield capacitor. Here's a quick clip of this loadout in practice. The second loadout, called Close Range Ambusher, is different in that it has a shotgun, which is great for close quarters engagements, and the ammunition belt, which helps prevent you from running out of ammo so quickly while using said shotgun. Here's a quick clip of this loadout in practice. Next, we have the Combat Medic. The first loadout, called Mid-Range Support, comes with an Assault Rifle, which is a fantastic mid-range weapon with a slight preference for aiming down sights, a standard sidearm, a medical applicator that can both heal and revive allies when left and right clicking respectively, a Nano regen device which allows you to heal everyone in a radius around you, including yourself, a nano regen capacitor which buffs your nano regen device, a standard frag grenade, and the auxiliary shield for extra survivability. Here's a quick clip of this loadout in practice. The second loadout, called Close Range Defender, is different in that it has a shotgun, which is great for close quarters combat, and nano weave armor, which significantly increases your survivability. Here's a quick clip of this loadout in practice. Next, we have the Engineer. The first loadout, called Repair and Resupply, comes with a carbine, a standard sidearm, a repair tool which allows you to repair friendly vehicles, maxes, generators, terminals, and also disarm enemy tank mines and C4, an anti-infantry turret, which is a death trap, and I would only recommend using it as makeshift cover, it's also important to note that despite this tarp being in your ability slot, pressing F will actually make you throw down ammo instead of placing this turret. You also get flak armor, which protects you from explosives, a standard frag grenade, and the auxiliary shield, which synergizes quite nicely with the engineer's inherent shorter shield recharge delay. Here's a quick clip of this loadout in practice. Yeah. 
got new meaning to hostile takeover. Start repairs. The second loadout, called Close Range Defender, is different in that it has a shotgun and the advanced shield capacitor, which again synergizes even more with the engineer's already better than average shields. So here's a quick clip of this loadout in practice. Next, we have the Heavy Assault. The first loadout, called Frontline Fighter, comes with a light machine gun, which has a larger than average magazine size, but also has pretty average accuracy while aiming and very poor hipfire accuracy, a standard sidearm, a rocket launcher, which is great against ground vehicles, an overshield, which absorbs additional damage when activated, Nano Weave Armor, which gives even more survivability and synergizes nicely with your overshield, a standard frag grenade, and the auxiliary shield for even more survivability. There isn't much to be said about the second loadout called Anti Vehicle, you just trade a little survivability for an extra rocket. Here's a quick clip of this class in practice. And that's it for all the bare bones basics of classes. Again, make sure to try them all, explore your options, and see what's fun for you. But when you do find something fun, how can you make it stronger? Well, to find out how to make your character stronger, you'll have to watch the next episode where we cover upgrading and cert spending. <laughs>